So what is OSI, Open System Interconnect? So, so many people, when systems came up, then st they started connecting the system and start uh, sending messages, sharing informations. What is why we need a network? To share information, to send a messages, right? So like that, so people are using. So Apple computer, they use a Apple talk uh, and IBM use IP access, PX kind of stuff. A DOD model came into market, um, right? Different uh, networking models and uh, different operating systems, different type of devices are came into market. Then they started interacting. So different models came into market uh, to how to connect the devices, communicating between the devices is there. So the common thing about around uh, all the kind of stuff, it is a open system interconnect means whatever the uh, type of model networking model you are using. So we can understand and we can create or we can troubleshoot any issue is occur uh, in a network related. So we can use this OSA model to understand uh, uh, the network model and troubleshoot the network. OK, that is the OSM. It is a reference model, guys. No one use the OSM model to apply. OK, means in a production wise, we don't use it. We use TCP IP protocol, so not OSM model. Next one is TCP is older than OSM. OSM will separate any net type of network and understand by seven parts, seven layer parts. So we divide a network complete network from a source to destination. OK, so complete network divided into seven parts. So it is seven layer model. It is a reference model. So to understand what is the network, how network functions and to troubleshoot the network related issues. Also understanding of OSA model is useful. OK, layer wise you can do troubleshooting. You know, maybe if you ask any person uh, networking uh, person will be there now. They put a resume and OSA layer wise troubleshoot or OSA troubleshoot. They put a OSA troubleshoot. What you troubleshoot OSA? So it is a OSA layer wise troubleshoot. So you should understand uh, issues occur, any network issues occur. Which layer actually the layer related uh, uh, we can understand and we can able to troubleshoot very easily if you follow OSA. And we can understand how network function is there. We want to create a new uh, network, so then what other things should be there in the net uh, components? So that is, we can understand from OSA model. Open system interconnect. It is a reference model, seven layer model. Okay, this OSA model is standardized by ISO. Some people think it's a OSA model created by ISO. No, no, guys. IOS, uh, ISO, ISO don't create anything. It won't create anything. It will standardize the models. It is standardized the businesses. You take any business like you can see ISO certificate certified. What is ISO certified means it will verify is this following standards or not. OK, based on that it will give you certificate it means this business is maintaining standards. This product is maintaining standards. OK, so like the, this organization is maintaining standards. So that is ISO certified. OK, so same thing ISO International Organization for Standardization. International Organization for Standardization to standardize the model of things. OK, ISO OSI model is standardized by ISO. And there is the research that's what where it is happened and what are the journals uh, RFCs like request for a comment kind of stuff happen. It is at a general uh, I3B, so Institute of Electrical Electronics Engineering. So they given a general number 802 means February 1980. Okay, there is a basically to understand the standards like 802.3 means it is an Ethernet standard. At 2.11, it is a their Wi-Fi related standard. 
okay there is a b c d is there depends upon your uh, the speed of uh, data transmission frequency settings and that of course there is a uh, some more uh, names also there for example ie tf internet engineering task force ayana ayana so that is uh, i can okay. so ayana it is actually uh, what kind of ip addresses people should use which area which country which division this is will control that kind of stuff ayana and i can both controls names and numbers assigned numbers authority assigned numbers authority okay so how ip address public ip address should be allocated that is to take care by ayana i can these are all internet related things i can okay international cooperation for assigned names and numbers you know we have a domain names are there no? so we have a domain name studio dot youtube.com www.youtube.com www.google.com facebook.com so the names and numbering this is their public ip address controlled by i can only reason and wise also it is there american registration for internet numbers like if you are in america and you want a public ip address you have to go to that part even india also there regional um uh, asia specific apac uh, asia apnic okay so you have to go to this to get a this is asia specific community so in this community what kind of ip address public addresses are available which is available and you will get it. okay transfer of ip address to get a ip addresses go to ipv6 participate what is happening so i want a, for example i am building my own organization i want a ipv6 okay so here it is given what is an ipv6 why it is important what it is mean what are the benefits get ipv6 okay so what are the things so get ip address now learn more ip address membership we'll see what will happen that's it i went to some other uh, regional uh, kind of stuff yeah, it is asking for login okay membership applications you have to pay not much easy don't do that one okay so different organizations are there guys please go through once their names and what is their responsibilities that is not very important now important is what is osl layer it is a reference model seven layer model it is to understand your network to create a new network or maybe to troubleshoot uh, any network this osa model is helpful and as i said osa model having a seven layers having a seven layer model it is so application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer and data link layer and physical layer last one is physical layer so totally seven layers the top three layers we call it as a upper layers or a software layers the bottom three layers these layers we call it as a hardware layers and bottom layers the middle layer we call it as a art of osa layer end to end connectivity means it provide a end to end connectivity okay these are the seven layers some people read as per their test book or as per their uh, learning time they may give you uh, this thing like a first one is the physical layer like a layer 1 layer 2 wise they will tell layer 1 physical layer layer 2 data link layer layer 3 network layer layer 4 transport layer layer 5 session layer layer 6 presentation layer layer 7 application layer but i am telling from 7 to 1 not 1 to 7 because the layer number sir the layer 1 is a physical layer layer 7 is application layer layer numbers are correct okay 
but the way people are uh, read already or maybe and then learn both the type of correct only guys first is application presentation like layer 7 application layer layer 6 presentation layer layer 7 session layer transport layer network layer data link layer physical layer or physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer application layer which way what are the which what are the way it is correct only but do not interchange the layers application layer transport layer presentation layer and there is a network layer and data link layer and session layer and presentation layer like that do not interchange the layers like this if you tell that is wrong answer what is the correct answer either 7 to 1 or 1 to 7 both are correct answers only but you have to follow the step -based. You have a seven layers. Maybe some people here for first time. How to remember this thing? Only one choice, guys. Better read it once, again and again and again and again. Keep telling, keep practicing. Okay, and that parallelly understanding, understanding. Even if you understand also, you may not remember. Understanding is important, but understanding also you may not remember all the layers in the sequence under either 7 to 1 or 1 to 7. Okay, so the first one is application layer as a part of application layer and uh, main part of things. So one important point is also there that is your protocols and port numbers. Guys, uh, understanding yes sir okay so this is a, another important concept guys what is protocols and port numbers uh, this is something it is showing. so protocols are set of rules that is in college and everywhere people are telling protocols are set of rules what is the set of rules they are telling some information so, so just i'm not involving in that one guys Protocols are very important in the communication. Why? Because protocols define what type of communication it is. For example, I want to access the website, web page I want to access. So I have to use protocol HTTP. Okay. For example, I want to upload or download a file. Okay. Okay, this is an application. We use this application to upload or download files which operates with the FTP protocol. The remote server is there. The remote server, <laughs> I want to upload and download a file. So that is, I use a FTP protocol. I'm sending and receiving a mail. I will send and receive a mail. <coughs> I have to use SMTP protocol. Okay, like this. Every communication, every type of communication, not always you do a website kind of stuff, or close value uh, items, or reopen items in our system. What happened? This is not sent or listening. This is sent or not sent? So, my people. I didn't see him. This is I received. So I can discard this one. Okay, sorry. Um, so protocols. So where are we? Yeah, you want to access a web page. To from web server, we use HTTP protocol, or maybe a web server uh, is giving you a, a web page HTTP protocol. There is a file server you want to upload or download a file, so then it is a FTP protocol. You want to send a mail, SMTP protocol. You want to receive a mail, okay, popular IMI protocol. 
this is NTP protocol. See my uh, time is there. No, this time is synchronized with uh, uh, Windows dot uh, time dot Windows dot com uh, server NTP protocol. LDAP authentication protocol. Okay, like this, the protocols are defined. Protocols are defines what type of communication it is. Okay, what is your request and what is the request? What is the response? We'll understand by protocols only, guys. That's what I try to write here. You can see. So understand what is the requested from client and server. response from server and client. Okay, it's small as you will say response from client and server. So here it is. So protocols defines what type of communication it is. See it is HTTP, HTTPS, see. HTTP is used for a web access related HTTPS also used for a web access purpose. Okay. Both are web access purpose. What is the difference then? HTTPS is secure. How? HTTP over SSL means using SSL or TLS, it encrypt your data. For example, I'm accessing this data. I've opened some page means I send a request. What is the content in the page? So I'm getting the data, right? This data is encrypted while I am sending or receiving data is encrypted. So if anybody is attacked on my communication while on my packets while I'm sending and receiving, if someone is trying to attack on my data, data they cannot understand because it is encrypted. If I don't use HTTP, if I use HTTPS means your server and client server is HTTP, you use HTTP only, you don't have a choice, okay? Server is HTTPS, then you should use HTTPS, okay? So data is sending and receiving. For sending and receiving a data, okay, HTTP. Yeah, uh, you're sending and receiving through HTTP, the data is not encrypted. So if anybody attack on your packet, then they will understand what data you are transmitting. Bank accounts, banking websites, email websites, social media websites are compulsory to follow the HTTP, yes. Okay, so what is HTTP and HTTPS? Both are for a web access purpose, web page access purpose only, web communication. HTTPS is a secure, it works for SSL using SSL. It encrypt the data. HTTPS data is encrypted while you are sending and receiving. Data is encrypted. HTTP data is not encrypted. Guys, understand HTTP HTTPS. No one is saying anything. Yes, okay, it's a compulsory question, guys. Compulsory means it's the most common question. What is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? Okay. Next protocol, FTP, file transfer protocol. Okay. While well, you yes, want to upload a file or download a file from FTP server, it is FTP protocol. Next one is SSH. Remote access purpose. Remote access purpose. I have a remote server. For example, I have a remote Linux server is there. I want to connect my remote uh, SSH server from here to configure or work. To, I want to work with my remote server. I will connect with the SSH. 
So here I have given a remote server name or IP address. This is their port number, SSH, open. So I can able to connect it to my remote server and access my remote server. Okay, that is SSH. It is a CLI based command line interface type of connectivity SSH. And Telnet, Telnet is also same thing. Telnet is, I have a remote server, okay, a remote device. So it is a Telnet server. I can connect with the Telnet protocol. Port number is 23, IP address, okay, open. Then what happened? I will connect it to my remote server. I can work with my remote server from my PC, remote access protocols. What is the difference by default? A Telnet is non encryption. You don't encrypt any data while it's transmitting data. While transmitting data. SSH is a protocol. It is also remote access, command line interface, but data is encryption. Telnet, command line interface, remote access, no encryption. RDP, remote desktop protocol, means I have a remote server. For example, I have a remote server. This remote server uh, uh, or a remote machine is there, remote desktop, or maybe Windows 10 machine, or maybe Windows server machine is there. I can access directly their desktop environment. You can see my, you are viewing my desktop, right? Similarly, similarly, not same. It is not same. It is a desktop sharing, a desktop sharing, like a um, uh, any desk, team viewers, these meetings and all desktop sharing. I shared my desktop. You can view my desktop. Remote desktop is not like that. Remote desktop is accessing the desktop. I can access this system from my PC. Okay, RDP. Of course, by default, it is a encryption, encryption involved in it. Okay, without any encryption, you can't access. SMTP, POP3, IMAP. Guys, these three protocols are mail communication purpose. SMTP protocol used to send a mail, which is outgoing mail, send a mailing purpose, outgoing mail server. Right. To send a mail, I want to send a mail, I'll use SMTP protocol. I want to retrieve a mail, means already my mail is there in my mail server. I want to retrieve my mail, then I use a POP3 protocol. IMAP version 4 also same thing, to retrieve a mail only. So either you can use POP3 or IMAP to uh, retrieve a mails, to send a mail, SMTP protocol. Okay. The next one is TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol. Use it to remote configuration files, like you want to upload a remote configuration file, or download a remote configuration file, backup the remote configurations of your devices, then we use a TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol. Remote configurations, remote uh, deployments, remote deployments, configurations, you can use it. DHCP DNS, DHCP DNS, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So we are getting an IP address, either you should configure manually or you will get a automatically, right? So you are getting an IP address automatically from DHCP server. You are getting IP address automatically from DHCP server. Okay. So that is a DHCP server. Okay, DHCP protocol, dynamic host configuration protocol in between DHCP server and client, DHCP protocol is used. DNS, yes, yeah, tell me, tell me. Sir, what is that number 53 means? It's a port number. Okay, sir. Okay, it's a port number. Guys, protocols we know but what is this port number? Very good. You ask question. Finally, one person. Okay. What is the protocol? Protocol, we understand. What is this port number? So while you are uh, using a protocol, we don't actually sending protocol. We are sending port numbers. These port numbers, there is a 65,536 port numbers are there out of 1023. Port numbers are reserved port number for a certain protocols. Okay, 
So obviously have a lot of protocols are there. So these port numbers are reserved for a particular port protocol. So while you are communicating, so we are uh, instead of sending a protocol, we send a port number. That's the point. Okay. So DNS 53 port number is 53 domain name system. So I open a, a website like this, but this is something somewhere server right website means it's just just for access name only, but data stores in the server. So I'm getting a data from the this web server. Guys, always remember all communications by IP address only you should contact w3schools.com www.w3schools.com <coughs> okay www.w3schools.com if you were accessing it uh, uh, with a name but you should access with a ip address right so but how many ip addresses you can remember there's several uh, servers are there in the world now I open a w3schools.com after that Java T point after that one land.microsoft.com after that one I will open oracle.com then I will open amazon.com okay aws.com so many things I have to access daily right even if you see here I use www.youtube.com then I open studio.youtube.com docs.google.com okay so here it is as uh, Microsoft uh, SharePoint this is Office 365. Okay, I open this link. So point is you cannot remember all the phone numbers. For example, what we will do, we'll create a contact list. In your mobile, you create a contact list, mobile number and a name, name and one of mobile number. Same concept it is there is a DNS server separately. We have DNS servers. Uh, there is big concept is there, but I'm telling very simple with cutting all the additional part. There is a DNS server. You want an IP address of www.facebook.com. So request go to automatically you open www.facebook.com in your browser. Automatically request go to DNS server. It asked DNS server, I want an IP address of www.facebook.com. So DNS server will give you IP address of www.facebook.com server. Same, I open studio.youtube.com. I open docs.google.com. I open mail.google.com. Mail.google.com. That is gmail.com. Okay, that is original name is gmail.com. Okay, so our name, okay, but originally if you open gmail.com, you can observe mail.google.com. So I know the names, but I don't know their IP address. How I'm getting an IP address? The request go to your DNS server. A DNS server returns an IP address of www.youtube.com, studio.youtube.com, divorcees.google.com, or a uh, <coughs> like that okay so land.microsoft.com w3schools.com so their server ip address we are getting that is a dns okay so even uh, when i got to come to this dns kind of stuff ip address kind of stuff you know people i will warn this is not uh, correct. okay No, it is good. We know already NTP network time protocol. If you go to this, my time is running, right? So what I'm doing, I'm going to uh, adjust date and time. OK, and I will show you. Synchronize your clock with the time.windows.com. There is a server called time.windows.com. It is synchronized the time according to there based on my time zone selection. If I change my time zone, my time will be changes. OK, so like that. OK, that is NTP. Kerberos, K 
KR, BR, YS, Kerberos, LDAP, both are authentication protocols. Kerberos mainly used in Microsoft Active Directory environment. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. Simple Network Management Protocol mostly we used in a monitoring purpose only. Guys, three things are very important. So one is HTTP and uh, HTTPS. Okay. Next one is what is DHCP? DNS. Um, SMTP. Pop three. IMAP. These are uh, very, very already I given an uh, important one, but again I'm giving after that one also. Okay, TFTP, SSH, Telnet, these are all very important guys. But compulsory, concentrate on uh, compulsory again, all things you have to know what are the protocol, their abbreviation, hypertrax transmission protocol, okay, file transfer protocol, dynamic host configuration protocol, okay. Uh, network time protocol, lightweight directory access protocol, uh, remote desktop protocol, simple mail transmission protocol. So abbreviations are important, protocols and their port numbers important. Purpose of that protocol is important. Plus HTTP, HTTPS, what is it? So simple thing guys, you may may not know what is Calabros. Okay, just for example, because we are not taking any uh, uh, the server related part now. OK, so you are attending attend tomorrow. So at least to know what is the use of that particular protocol. That's it. The two most commonly used. But most commonly used HTTP HTTP every day we are using that one. OK, that's what I'm trying to say. These protocols and their port bus always useful. Guys, understand this part? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. It is also a part of application layer. Uh, uh, yeah, tell me. Do we, not, do we not need to study about LDAP also? Do you need to study okay. this protocol support numbers? L LDAP, lightweight directory access protocol. Do we need to study this also? Yeah, right, right. Just know what is protocol and port numbers. No need of depth knowledge. What it's what. It's uh, important. Okay. So I draw a one diagram here. That means what it does and the port number. Yeah, protocol, abbreviation, what is user protocol and their port number. Okay. For example, you cannot concentrate uh, uh, now. But at least read. OK, I cannot, sir. I can't remember you're given a 15, 16 uh, port numbers are there. How can we remember? Just read once. How much you can remember like a five? Six, right? Protocol port number and what it is five, six, try at least. Anytime next time try again. Try again because guys, I'm telling not only now, this, this is just we are getting uh, whether they will ask or not. Also, I don't know. Sometimes they will ask, sometimes they don't ask. OK, and not about interview. It is maybe if you want to learn in future extension of network networking related, not like a CCNA CCNP guys. So the base of networking knowledge is very useful when you are want to go with the servers, Windows server, Linux server, cloud computing. Cloud is something you are here, the cloud word, that's it. The cloud services like root 53. What is root 53? It is a naming services. 
same do dns with dns is there na same dns is a concept of dns is nothing but root 53 in aws okay it's very simple right so what you do in uh, uh, there so the same ip addresses protocols communications okay these are the very base of uh, knowledge but as you said correct, correct as we, you think people um, yeah first time you hear it's very difficult to get it okay so but try try for five then six then seven you don't put all time on this one i'm telling within your time daily put a half an hour or 40 minutes study completed so you have a time you are interested in that one try once more so start it is very useful in a long run okay even if you've done ccia exam they last what is protocol and port number you will have seen that kind of interviews okay it is useful for a, a, a guys applications application layer presentation layer session layer one by one layer i will try to tell very simple because it's already five to six so i'll try to complete uh, in a quick like some 20 minutes will target okay 20 25 minutes i will try to complete you see application layer application part of your communication what is application part this is the web browser a browser is a application client side application server side there is another application okay web browser web server related applications are there like a tomcat or maybe it is httpd or maybe microsoft internet information service that is also one server application built-in one maybe use uh, ngix okay now it recently it has become more popular with the uh, ng inx ng inx it is also a web server okay so whatever i am trying to say it is it's a web server so client side server side applications and in a client or server side guys here i am using a http i am going to cmd command prompt this is also one application only right can i put a http protocol here it won't accept right http protocol it won't work here ssh tell network here but http won't work here and i open a filezilla right so this filezilla works with ftp protocol not http or a smtp protocol means the protocols and the port numbers sorry protocols client side applications and server side applications comes under application layer only like you want to request a web page you want to access a web page you open a site with the http what type of request what server and which page it is you are defined like that okay we define a url in this url this is the your server full set server this is the page information this is the protocol information okay so when you send a request so you don't know ip address of this part you will get ip address from dns then for the request go to this server from server you got this page okay you got this page right so client side application it is web browser server side it is a web server like outlook i showed outlook right this is the outlook i received a mails to outlook i can send a mails to outlook mail server mail client okay Okay. Mail server, MS Exchange is a mail server, Zimbra is a mail server, like a server side applications. Outlook is a mail client application from web browser also you can access mails through over HTTP protocol. I showed Putty, right? So Putty, uh, I, we can use SSH and uh, Telnet, so other sites SSH server and client. FTP, Felzilla, okay, or RDP, MS TCS, like a Client side application is there, server side application, and their protocols and port numbers comes under things. So, from where you do, do a request, where you will send 
or where you will receive from where you will receive this are comes under application layer. Next one, uh, no, 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 yeah. The next one is presentation layer. So why I went to back also, I don't know, okay. So next one is our presentation layer. <coughs> presentation layer is a very simple presentation layer. It is, what it is, it encode your data. While you are sending a data, you are, it will encode your data. While you are sending, <coughs> while you are sending request, okay, while you are sending, sending request or response, something you are sending, it will encode your data. Data can be in a different format, right? Can you see it is a thumbnail format, there is a text inside, here also certain text, some URLs are there, HTML format, PHP format, or a .NET format, what are the page format it is, what is the content in the data, I am sending a file, the file can be a mp3 file, mp4 file, it can be a picture or it can be a text file or it can be a pdf file, what are the data it is, it will convert into ASCII format, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, so we will convert what are the data it is, we will convert into ASCII format. Next one is in at presentation layer, whatever the data it is compressed. So it will compress the data. And next encrypted. So you are using HTTP or HTTPS. HTTP don't have encryption. HTTPS having a encryption. SSH having encryption. So while you are using the encryption part, compulsory encryption type protocol it is, you do encryption. Okay, so while you are sending, you encode the data, compress the data, encrypt the data. While you are receiving, you will decrypt the data, decompress the data, and decode the data. Okay, that is presentation layer duty. Next one is session layer, guys. Session layer, one single line, but session layer is very, very important uh, in the network. What is a session layer? So I try to open this web page. So I am sending a request to the www.w3schools.com. So I want this information. So again, I will receive that information. So while you are sending, so it is a session is created. And once you are completely received, then session is completed. So session will be created and terminated and session will be maintained till the completion of your work. You know, recently I tried to tell one example that is a lot of people are uh, somewhat they are getting. You know, you go to Amazon, Flipkart or anything, just you go there, you are purchasing something, like you open a web browser or something you open, you are uh, putting order, like you add to cart is done, you enter the payment page, payment page, you enter the payment details and click enter. Okay, then you'll ask about EP and all completed, right? So once payment is completed, so it will return to the your page, your order page successful like that, right? But meanwhile, if you see on the screen, guys, it shows do not refresh, do not refresh, or a, do not press the back button, do not press the back button or a refresh the page. Why? Why? Because of if you press the back button or you refresh the page, well, this is entire session, entire thing is happened at one single session ID. Any network is interrupted, internet is interrupted, the session will be terminated. If you refresh the page, a new session will be created and you don't know what happened to your old session. Payment thing is went like you given all payment information, you click OK. So what happened? Your payment information went to the bank and payment is successful. Then it will return and it will show payment is successful and back to the uh, place, order place to kind of stuff, right? But if you interrupted what happened, your Amazon and your bank will can confuse how to return page to you, how to come back to you, they don't know because your session is ID completed. So their money will be detected, but the order won't be placed. The entire session will be disturbed. Even myself have seen that kind of stuff in while I'm booking a, a railway ticket in IRCTC. 
So Tatkal ticket, 10 o'clock, it will open. I'm trying to book my ticket from Hyderabad to Pune. So what happened? I am using Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is very good speed that time, so 40, 50 Mbps. So I open, I am giving all the details. So finally, the power cut, Wi-Fi star. Mobile is switched to 4G. 4G, internet is there. Immediately, within a second, it is connected to 4G, but I cannot able to continue. Why? Because sir, one path I have a session, the internet is disconnected, and I connected to another path, session is gone. <laughs> okay, that is the session is powerful, guys. It will create a session, it maintains a session, it terminates session. So when you create a session, and once you receive, means when you are sending, you will get a session. Once you are complete a transaction, or once complete transaction completed, then only session ID will be there. Even I loaded a page, right? A page is loaded already. Okay, session ID is completed, but how you are getting updated? Updates. Something update is there. How I can I am getting an update immediately? Because of my browser, that is a browser technique. Browser is every 20 minutes, every 20 seconds or 50 seconds. That's time timeout is there. Like a, every 15 seconds or 20 seconds, it sends it will send a request to the server, uh, like a refresh the page request automatic refresh so the session id will be again created okay so once you receive session is completed but our browser will keep doing that's why some people suggest like internet people do not open more browsers clear the catches because you open a browser even you don't open a tabs inside catches will try to send a request directly pop-ups browser notifications browser notifications, browser pop-ups. That is very dangerous, guys. It will kill your internet. OK, session, la session layer. Yeah, so there is a big layer is there that is transport layer. Transport layer is uh, much bigger than uh, any other layer. Once we complete a transport layer, another five minutes, you can able to complete remaining layers, OK? This is a transport layer. Transport layer is a provide end-to-end -end connectivity. It is a heart of OS layer. Transport layer is a heart of OS layer. It provide end-to-end -end connectivity. So segment the data. What transport will layer do? You have a data. The data will be segmented. Data will be segmented. For example, you can see, hello, how are you? Okay, this is the data I want to send. So this data will be segmented. Just for our understanding, I divide into words. Normally it is, they divide into binary format. No? So every it will part like it. Okay. So they will numbering on it. Just for our example, I am telling this. They put a numbering, it will put a numbering on it for a sequence purpose. Now you are sending a data from A to B. Okay. So you send a packet, like you send a packeting, right? First packet you send and B received. Second packet you send, B is received. And how you know it is received? Because B will send an acknowledgement. I received a packet. We will send an acknowledgement. I received a packet. And I send a third packet. It not received. So I didn't receive any acknowledgement. I didn't receive any acknowledgement. I send a fourth packet. Fourth packet is received. And I send an acknowledgement. Okay. Now what happened at B, the packet is showing like a hello. How you okay? Now my A is realized I didn't receive a acknowledgement for a, this particular packet. Then I will send it again. Then B is received a third packet and it will give an acknowledgement. Means complete packets are sent successful. Now new packet is added. Now the data is like this. 
because of the sequence and numbering, it will reorder again. The first one is this, second one is this, third one is this, fourth one is this. It will reorder the data back. So complete data set is this. Now this is the best practice like segmenting means put cut into the small pieces, send piece by piece by using numbering and sequencing, you can reconstruct it. Guys, this is also called as a error correction. Transport layer do error correction. Now what is error correction? Any packet is missing or corrupted at a destination. Okay, so the source will send the packet again and it will be rearranged back again with the help of numbering and sequencing. So that is a error correction. So where error correction occurs? Transport layer. Okay. So it will do multiplexing and demultiplexing or TCP UDP. This is another one. Okay. So at transport layer, there is a multiplexing and demultiplexing of TCP UDP. Yes, meaning is very simple meaning. Okay. We have discussed certain protocols, right? Protocols, port numbers, this kind of stuff we discussed, right? In the protocols, like I, I told about some protocols, right? In protocols, we discuss Certain protocols are uh, um, TCP type protocols. Some protocols are UDP type protocols. Some protocols are TCP type protocols. Some are UDP type protocols. Okay. For example, you take HTTP TCP type protocol, FTP TCP type protocol. Okay. TFTP trivial file transfer protocol is a UDP type protocol. Okay, DNS both THCP. Okay, DNS DNS is TCP UDP. Both satisfaction is there. DHCP is a UDP type protocol. Okay, TCP UDP is guys it's type of protocols. So we have different protocols. Some are TCP type. Some are UDP type. TCP type protocols are acknowledgement based protocols means how they behave. So when you send a packet to destination, destination received a packet, destination will give you an acknowledgement like that. Source no destination is received a packet. See it is this third packet is not received by destination. So destination understand third packet is sorry, source understand third packet is not received. How? destination not send an acknowledgement for a third packet so i can understand i didn't receive acknowledgement for third packet destination not received a third packet simple guys destination received a packet it give an acknowledgement to source destination not received a packet it does not give acknowledgement to the source again source receive acknowledgement means destination is received Source does not uh, source received an acknowledgement. Destination packet is received. Source not received an acknowledgement. Source does not reach. So source destination not received a packet. Sorry. Source does not receive an acknowledgement. Destination not get a packet. Okay. So no confusion. So what you will do? You will resend the packet. What Sir, like. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. So like we, uh, when we sent a message in WhatsApp uh, and the another person seen, we saw a blue tick. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of stuff. We can try it on it. Okay? The guy is received like a delivery message type. Acknowledgement is a, also a world concept only. Like a uh, delivery. So yeah, he got delivered the packet. He got delivered the message. We knows, source knows. 
source and destination received or not source will know based on the acknowledgement so that is a tcp type behavior udp type behavior is different udp type protocols like source send a packet destination is received or not we don't mind we'll keep send a packets tcp is acknowledgement based udp is a no acknowledgement we are using so http smtp ftp snmp like these are examples of tcp type protocols udp protocols are dhcp tftp dns is both tcp udp type even if you want to like a tcp udp protocols so you will get a list of protocols okay uh, example protocols this is the difference between you don't go to difference between that's a big thing protocols you can list a list of protocols based on the tcp and udp it is okay so uh, list of protocols based on tcp udp so you'll get that information okay tcp type protocols called reliable and connection oriented guys connection oriented does not mean wired or wireless connection oriented does not mean wired or wireless kind of stuff connection oriented uh, it is called as a connection oriented because of it is called a connection oriented why because of source knows destination is received a packet or not source knows destination received a packet or not okay that's it is a connection oriented and reliable protocol connection less source don't know whether destination is received a packet or not okay this is personally there is a good text is also there the difference between tcp udp uh, synchronization acknowledgement that full explanation is there but this is a basic explanation to understand difference between tcp unit okay next one is uh, this is also important difference between tcp udp flow control windowing kind of concepts what is the flow control or windowing guys here while i am explaining i taken one by one packet right one packet sent and we receive an acknowledgement another packet will send will receive an acknowledgement so that is one by one sending but actually it will work like this source send a 10 packets at a time to the destination and we are telling to the destination i am sending 10 packets i am sending 10 packets to the destination so we'll send a 10 packets destination received a packets if any packet is missing okay, okay sorry destination received a packet for received packet it will give acknowledgement any packet is missing for example you have sent 10 packets some eighth packet is missing so it will send for a remaining packets acknowledgement to the remaining packets okay so that is called a windowing it's a flow control or windowing is like that you will send a bunch of packets at a time to the destination so once destination received all packets good if it is anything missing okay also anything missing or maybe all packets are received destination will give acknowledgement for a, the packets it received packets it received very simple right <laughs> what is flow control not one by one we send a bunch of packets destination received the packets and give the acknowledgement to the received packets next one guys pdu packet data in it in a application layer the data is there presentation layer what are the form data is there session layer what are the form it is data is there this data we call it as a data but layer wise data what are the layer it is the layer wise data we call it as a pdu packet data unit packet data unit is layer wise data what are the data in the layer it is pdu only okay so data from here uh, application layer presentation layer session layer what are the layer it is what are the first three layers having data called data okay, what i am telling what are the layer it is the data in the layer we called as a pdu okay in transport layer we are adding a tcp header tcp header means it contains information about segments numbers 
protocols, UDP, TCP type, UDP type, what type of protocol it is, where mixer and multiplexing wise and window number, everything will put it in TCP header added to your PDU. So this total one we call it as a segment. The transport layer from transport layer we got a segment. This it will send to the network layer. The segment will send to the network layer. OK, so what is this segment? The PDU at PDU at transport layer. Transport layer layer data is segment. The segment is sent to the network layer. Next. Next one is network layer. Network layer got a segment. This segment is added with the routed protocols and routing protocols, guys. Routed protocols means IP addresses or IPX that this addressing, logical addressing comes under routed protocols. And of course, we use IP addresses and either it is IPv4 or IPv6. Plus, routing protocols. Routing protocols will tell you how to reach the destination, right? So routing protocols are there if in case you are using some routing protocols that information also there here. OK, so there is a network header is added to your segment. So that is we call it as a packet. So the generally the network header means source IP destination IP. Of course, some other information also will added, but simply tell network header means source IP address destination IP address is adding to your segment that we call it as a packet. So what is the network layer? What is the data layer data of a network layer is packet? What is a PDU at network layer packet? This packet is sent to the data link layer. Sent to the data link layer. Data link layer having a two sub layers. Data link layer having a two sub layers. One is LLC, another one is a Mac layer. Okay, LLC, logical link control, another one is Mac layer. Logical link control, this layer is take care of your WAN protocol when you are communicating in the WAN, okay. When you are communicating in the WAN links, when you should use WAN protocols, okay. You should use WAN protocols, okay. So, like APPP, HDLC, Frame Relay, AMPLS, these are uh, WAN technologies, WAN protocols. When you are communicating in the WAN, we use a WAN protocols. If you are not using WAN protocol, then you know what. Media access control, media access control. That is, we know already every NIC having a MAC address. Okay, you understand now why switch comes under data link layer? Because data link layer is about a MAC address. Switch also understand MAC address. Network layer is example is router. So why? Because of it is about a routed and routing protocols. Router is taking care of IP addresses and routing protocols, right? Same way, okay? And uh, data link layer, so another part is MAC layer, that is a media access control. The MAC address is 48 bit. MAC address is 48 bit, 12 hexa number, represent 12 hexa number. It is also called as a physical layer. MAC address is 48 bit in binary 12 represented in hexadecimal 12 hexadecimals. It is also called as physical address. Your MAC address, source MAC address, destination MAC address were added to the packet, and there is a CRC cyclic redundancy 
check. A CRC is an algorithm. It is a kind of algorithm to check errors, data errors. You received a data, okay? You received a data. So data may corrupt it, right? Yeah. It is traveling through the network wires and all. So data you received, but data may be corrupted, right? So we will check data is good or corrupted. So where error checking happens, guys, in data link layer. Where error checking is happen, data link layer. Where error correction is occurs, transport layer. Okay. So this total one we call it as a frame, source MAC address, destination MAC address, the packet and CRC. The totally we call it as a one frame. This frame is sent to the physical layer. The frame sent to the physical layer. Frame sent to the physical layer. Okay. Frame sent to the physical layer. So physical layer convert this frame into bit streams. This bit stream, according to your connectivity, physical connectivity, it converts into the electrical signal or a radio signal or light wave signal based on what type of an IC you are using. Okay. So you are using Ethernet, you use a UTP STP cables, electrical wires, using a Wi-Fi kind of adapters. Then you use a radio signal. Okay, it will convert into radio signal. You are using your fiber optical cables. It is become a light waves. So guys, this is what I am trying to. See. And already I told. I already I told. So application to presentation layer or application to physical layer or physical layer to application layer. Which sequence is correct? Both are correct because of. When you are sending a packet, when you are sending a packet, okay, first while you are sending, while you are sending application layer, then presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, uh, network layer, okay, network layer, and data link layer, then physical layer. Okay, so you received a packet where you receive physical layer. Then it packet goes to data link layer, then network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. So it is top to bottom as well as bottom to top. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to see. That is a ping command related guys. So I am trying to search only for this one. There is a small comparison between TCP and uh, UDP. Of course, layer wise troubleshooting kind of stuff is there, but now it is already 627. Okay, simple. I will go. Guys, we are all using TCP IP protocol set. Okay, the TCP IP also called as a DOD model. DOD model. So initial name is DOD model. Later it is changed to TCP model because that time it is a defense model. So this is a comparison only, guys. So what is the comparison? In TCP IP, application layer is there. Application layer to three duties: application layer duty, presentation layer, and session layer. These three layers are combined in a one single layer called a application layer. In a transport layer, in a same as a OSA model transport layer. What are the transport layer do? Same for the transport layer. Same. Network layer in a in a OSA model network layer. Here it is internet layer. In TCP/IP we have a internet layer. That internet layer. What are the internet layer do? Same as our OSA model network layer. Network access layer. Network access layer is a combination of Data link layer and physical layer. 
you know, we can get a doubt. So we have a NIC uh, is in uh, our NIC. NIC as per TCP IP, it is a network access layer because NIC is connected physically, physical connectivity plus MAC address. NIC having a physical connectivity plus MAC address. That's why it is a network access layer. Okay. Uh, you may get that, sir. NIC also having IP address. Actually, uh, IP address we we cannot as we do, we are seeing an uh, adapter and on adapter we are saying original it is not an uh, adapter. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Don't don't discuss more. If you want more discussion, more confusion. <laughs> one more. Time. Either one or two. layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. Okay, so we have a protocols and port numbers. Protocols are used to understand what type of communication it is by client RS server. Okay, different protocols and their port numbers. Application layer is an application side of client, client side or server side application part. Either it is your uh, uh, client server server side web browser or web server kind of stuff okay what kind of application so through application only we are communicating first of all right so we need an application to communicate so what kind of application what protocol you are using in that application is important presentation layer presentation layer is about a encoding decoding compress decompress encrypt decrypt session layer whenever you are sending or receiving it will create a session, understand the session, maintain the session, and terminate the session. Transport layer provide an end-to-end -end connectivity. It chop the data into pieces called segmenting and numbering and sequencing on these pieces. Also, it will do error correction. It multiplex, demultiplex of TCP, UDP protocol. The protocols are TCP type or UDP type protocols. It will multiplex here. Okay, it will also do flow control windowing. The TCP header will add it to your PDU packet data unit. You got a segment. The segment is sent to the network layer and uh, at network layer source IP address, destination IP address is added to your segment that is called a packet. That packet is added with the source MAC address, destination MAC address plus CRC as a data tail. CRC is an algorithm to check the errors. Okay, the total packet you will count as a frame. The frame is sent to the physical layer. The guys uh, physical layer uh, convert uh, this frame into bit stream and bit stream to either electrical signal or radio signal or light wave signal depends upon what type of NIC you are using. <coughs> okay. And TCP IP having four, four layers only application, transport, network and network. Uh, application transport internet and network access layer okay so this is a your ysa model so small small things are left over i will inform tomorrow classes there are not otherwise monday okay so you have to read all networking related service desk related tomorrow and day after tomorrow okay i will take okay, class okay now. sir okay sir Yes. Meet you on Monday. Bye bye.